let's get into it not wasting no time as you can see the military junta in niger has several diplomatic relations with nigeria france togo and the united states of america the decision followed a failed effort by ECOWAS to resolve the ongoing impasse. The Niger coup leaders have ended military cooperation with France, deepening concerns over anti-Western turn. The move to cut ties with the former colonial power came amid threats of a military intervention by other West African states. The diplomatic mission to Niger fails to secure the release of the ousted president. The delegation from ECOWAS leaves early, having failed to meet the detained president or the coup leader damn so basically the representatives from ECOWAS went down to Niger they knocked on the front door and they didn't even answer the door they didn't meet the president or the coup leader they didn't even answer the door damn damn all right let's get back into it now what I wanted to talk about today I was watching an excellent um uh, an excellent live stream from the good brother search for Uhuru and he was actually talking about this topic as well he had a, he had another brother as a guest on the show who I respect that brother I'm subscribed to his channel um, I believe his name is Abube Okoli. And considering Nigeria is actually, you know, right involved in what seemed what seemed to be the 2003 West African Civil War, this brother was a Nigerian brother giving his opinion on the topic. And I think he said some interesting things. So I'm going to run the footage and I'm going to interject on my commentary. Let's go. Because at the end of the day, America will pull up to your doorstep. And understandably so. That's how power moves. Now, at a local level, we talked about ECOWAS earlier. Now, ECOWAS is actually um, really in danger right now because many of the nation states have been suspended due to the military coups and the remaining members are being asked to attack, to militarily assist France and America. Yeah, that's crazy. That, that's, just, uh, yeah, that's just ridiculous. Now we actually got some news coming out today. The president of Nigeria, Tinubu, seeks the Senate support for ECOWAS military intervention in Niger. Tinubu is reportedly seeking support to intervene against the ruling military in Niger, where a coup has removed the democratically elected government. The Nigerian president, Tinubu, has written a letter to his country's Senate, asking its members to back a regional military intervention in Niger, where a coup toppled the democratically elected government of Mohamed Bazoum last week. Now, as you can see, President Tinubu kicking it with his man, you know, say kicking it with his partner. Now, I always knew Nigeria was an Anglophone country, I never knew if they had any, you know, connection to France, but maybe Tinubu, you know, Tinubu, he, you know, he a big rich black man. Maybe he got a condo up in France, you know, maybe he got a, he got a villa up in France. We don't know about maybe he got some kids going to university in France. You don't know what's going on, bro. you don't know any type of any type of relationships or agreements or arrangements these guys have behind the scenes. Only they know. Only they know what's going on. You know, we don't know. We're, we're just the regular people on the ground. We're not up. We're not up in the highest levels of power. We don't know what's going on up there, man. But anyways, yesterday, if you watch my video on this topic. I spoke about how the, the Senegalese foreign minister, she said she was ready at any given moment to press the button and also support alongside Nigeria and other ECOWAS member states to restore Mohamed Bazoum to the presidency of Niger. Now, as you can see, the Senegalese foreign minister does not hide her connections or her affiliations. She lets it be known. She's not hiding. She's outside, okay? She hanging out with the United States Secretary of State. She hanging out with the French ambassador. She going to France and going, going to meet the high members of the French government. She's not hiding her homie. She Listen, she letting, she letting you know those are my partners right here. And the lines are being drawn in the sand like I told you in the video yesterday. Those who are aligned with Western powers, those who have interest in Western nations, they are letting it be known. Yes, we are pledging allegiance and we're ready for whatever. Now, the reason why I titled the video... The 2003 West African Civil War is because Burkina Faso and Mali have already issued an official statement saying that they weren't against any military intervention in Niger. And any intervention to restore President Mohamed Bazoum will be considered a declaration of war against them. Now, as you already know, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, they are all Francophone countries. They are all former colonies of the French Empire. Burkina Faso and Mali in the past couple years, they have been overthrown and they are currently being led by, as you already know, take a look up on the screen. To the left, the president of Mali, General Asimi Goita. To the right, Captain Ibrahim Chaore, president of Burkina Faso. Both of these men, I believe, in their mid to late 30s. And if you've been following the situation closely for a while, you notice a pattern that happens with each of these coups. Almost immediately, the new government, they banned the French media, they expelled the French ambassador, and they expelled the French military. And they cut diplomatic ties with France, both economically and politically. And the same thing happened in this coup in Niger just like in Burkina Faso and Mali. And Burkina Faso and Mali, they say they got the homies back in Niger. And Senegal and Nigeria, they talking about they're ready to ride on behalf of Western interests, on behalf of Western power. And that's why I titled the video, 
the 2003 West African Civil War. Now, as you can see to the left, President Mohamed Bazoum, when he was still in power with the French President Emmanuel Macron. Now, if you've been watching my videos, then I already told you the geopolitical situation in that area of West Africa. Burkina Faso and Mali, when they expelled the French forces, when they expelled the French military, they immediately set up shop in Niger. President Mohamed Bazoum opened the front door to the French. He opened the front door to his house and let the French military come and sit on the couch. And that's why Burkina Faso and Mali, they're back in the coup. Because in their minds, if they just expelled, if they just expelled the French military and the French military went right next door to Niger, that's still a that's still a threat to national security. And guess what? The French have been doing this for centuries, man. For centuries. What do you think happened after the Haitian Revolution? You think the French just say, okay, we're going back to France, we're going back home, we're going back to Paris? No, they said we're going next door to the Dominican Republic. That's why the Haitian military had to invade the Dominican Republic in 1805, because that's a threat to national security. So these tactics are nothing new. Their forefathers did the same thing, bro. This is why you study history. So they can't run that same game and the same play on you, because you've seen it before. You cannot have a hostile government setting up shop at your gates alongside your borders. You can't do it. And that is why Burkina Faso and Mali have taken the position that they have taken. And in fact, take a look up on the screen. The president of Burkina Faso has raised the alert level of his forces to a state of war. Now, I'm going to go back into the broadcast from last night um, from Search for Uhuru. I'm going to go back into it because I think he said some very interesting things. He touched on the whole, the different aspect of it as well. The different, the different ethnic affiliations as well. So let's get into it, man. I'm going to come back with my commentary. Let's go. Now here comes West Africa. Another now this is the theater. If there was to be any type of instance, now we've noticed that there've already been a demarcation. There's been a demarcation, and there have been clear sides. So, for example, at the recent ECOWAS meeting of heads of state, there were certain nations that were clearly missing: Mali, Niger, Guinea-Bissau, Burkina Faso, and Guinea were absent from the ECOWAS meeting in Abuja. They essentially boycotted it, and the ECOWAS meeting was essentially to see: okay, if we have to invade. Who's willing to put down resources? The fact that these nations clearly weren't there shows that they're counter to it at best or ready to fight uh, the other nations within ECOWAS if there is indeed an invasion. There's also footage of the military heads of states of Mali and Niger and some of these other nations actually meeting together. So there's intelligence showing that rather than going to the ECOWAS meeting, they had their own meeting. So the sides are already starting to become split. Now, the president of Nigeria, Asiwaju Ahmed Tinubu has come out to strongly state that we don't want any more coups in West Africa. So Nigeria has taken a hardline position as the nation to essentially say, yes, no coups. And the other nations have essentially taken the position to say, we're not worried about that. We're worried about these business agreements with France that are, in their words, crippling their nations. Another interesting thing is that Nigeria preliminarily is expected to lead the charge in any military invasion when it comes to ECOWAS. However, the problem is this, you have to understand ethnicity as well in Africa. Now, if you look at the people of Niger, they're Hausa people, the vast majority. And in Northern Nigeria, the vast majority are Hausa people. Some literally, the only thing separating Niger and Nigeria is a road in many cases, meaning that your neighbor behind you in a small town might be in Niger Republic, you'll be Nigerian, but both of you speak Hausa. You're both Hausa people and you're the same people and you've been the same people for a thousand years. However, the British decided to haphazardly draw a line and say that part is in, is a French territory, this part's an English territory. And they literally would draw a line through a town or a community or a city. And mind you that these people are of the same ethnic stock. So now the vast, a large majority of Nigerian armed forces are Northerners, Hausa people and Hausa speaking people. And it's interesting to note Hausa speaking people because Hausa speaking people share a natural affinity greater than the actual ethnic group of Hausa people. So the language of Hausa people unites them, similar to something like Swahili, where a language will unite the people and there's an affinity. So now you have, in the event that Nigeria would be fighting Niger, you would essentially be having a Southern president ordering Northern troops of Hausa extraction and Northern extraction, Hausa speaking people, to go and fight their neighbors who are also Hausa speaking people and Hausa ethnic people and the reasoning wouldn't quite be clear. That's another problem that we run into if we actually take a micro look at it and essentially telling someone from another ethnic group telling Hausa people they need to fight each other. That is another layer of difficulty that is going to be present. Now, another layer of difficulty if Nigeria were to actually fight Niger is that Niger is more in the desert than any other part of Nigeria. 
which means that you have people that grew up in the desert. They know how to survive in the desert. They live in the desert. The desert is inhospitable. They go into the desert, then launch attacks on you, and then go back into the desert. Worst comes to worst if you push them that far out. They will stay there. And moreover, there's no border between Niger and Nigeria. There's no official border. There are people that cross the border maybe 10 times a day just selling cola nuts, right? Because if you walk on this side of the street, you're in Nigeria. That side of the street, you're in Niger Republic. Now, if you create problems and there's a war with a porous border, you'll have insurgents simply cross in, go to a place, create a problem, and then leave when they're done and cross the line again. And that will be asymmetrical warfare. And the only way to stop asymmetrical warfare is through intelligence. And the Nigerian army intelligence gathering isn't as strong as it could be. And then not only is it a desert terrain, but you have factions forming, which means it won't be just one nation. It will be many nations internally and externally if these nations actually do engage in war. Now, the issue is that as some foreign media have noted, the coup in Nigeria leaves France and the US exposed in West Africa. Now, that's a big statement. It's stating that there's a weakness for them there. Now, you have to remember that when many of the French forces were kicked out of Mali and Guinea and some of the other places, they relocated to Niger. And Niger basically said, okay, we'll be the new base for Western power. So now that there's a coup in Niger, which was supposed to be the base of Western power, now Western power is really baseless. Now they have Cote d'Ivoire, but in the Sahel, they want to be able to maintain their grip on the uranium and the gold and many of the other natural resources that they have historically gotten at extremely low prices. Now, before I get out of here, man, I just want to touch on the complexity of the situation, right? I love what the brother touched on. Now, if you look at, if you look on the screen, you see the map. Niger sits right above Nigeria, right? In Northern Nigeria and the Niger Republic, right? It's a large quantity of Hausa speaking people, right? So even though they have different nationalities, these are the same people going back thousands of years, regardless of, regardless of the colonial borders. Now, the president of Nigeria, yes, even though he is a black man, he is an outsider to that culture. He is not a Hausa man. He's not a Hausa speaking person. But here's the complex thing. He's a Muslim man. And the majority of, of those up there in Northern Nigeria and in the, the Republic of Niger, they're Muslims, right? So now the Western forces are trying to tell a Muslim man from a different ethnic group to go tell his milit the men in his military, who a large amount of them are Hausa speaking men, to go attack other Muslim houses speaking men on behalf of Western power. It doesn't make any sense, bro. Never mind the fact that a large amount of Nigerians currently live in Niger and a large amount of people from the Niger Republic also cross the border into Nigeria, which adds another complicated layer to the entire situation. And then you got the Senegalese foreign minister who said that she is ready at any given moment to send her troops. A large amount of her troops are also Senegalese men who also are Muslim men. So now I don't understand it. How are you going to have a bunch of men of similar, similar ethnic groups and similar spiritual orientations fighting amongst each other, tearing each other up? And for what? Just because some American and French corporations want to continue making money? Come on, man. Come on, man. Now, listen, man. Uh, people have also wanted me to touch on something else as well. As you can see, uh, take a look up on the screen. The United States wants Kenya to lead a force in Haiti with 1,000 police. Kenya's offer to help Haiti came after a United States delegation visit. The offer by Kenya to help Haiti combat deadly gangs was cemented after the Biden administration visited the country. Now, people have been asking my thoughts on the situation. I can't really give my thoughts on the situation. Like I said, I like to sit back and, and analyze things. I don't like to jump out with, uh, with a prediction. I got love for the people of Kenya. And like I said before, the citizens and the government are two different things. So whatever you see happening at the highest levels of power, I don't put that on the common man and woman living in Kenya, number one. And number two, everybody knows Kenya is a, is a tributary state. It's a puppet state of the Western powers. And even in the headline, it said, the offer came, Kenya came forward with the offer after the United States personally visited the country. So, you know, obviously this is something coming from a higher power at the end of the day. And the United States is reacting because Haitians themselves have said that we don't want any white men coming to our uh, country. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm in support or I'm against it, but I'm just saying the United States, they went to Kenya for a reason because Haitians have been screaming from the mountaintops for years, myself included. We said, we don't want no white men stepping foot on Dessaline's land. That's, that's what we've been saying. So now the white boys, they went, okay, bet, I'm going to go to Kenya now. Because they went to one of, their, one of their client states, one of their puppet states, and they said, all right, 
They don't want no white boys. Bet we gonna send the goddamn the the, the Bahamians and the Kenyans and, and all that shit. So you gotta understand, man. The United States is the most powerful nation in the world for a reason, right? And when you are the when you are a powerful nation, this is something that even our forefathers understood if we actually studied our history, because our forefathers did the exact same thing. The United States understands in order to maintain my power, I have to establish governments, I have to establish satellites, I have to establish tributary states, client states, puppet states all over the world that work in my interest, that I can push the button and manipulate and I can make things happen for, for, my, for my personal benefit anywhere in the world. You have to understand this, bro. You have to understand this. Life is about power. Life is not about playing fair. Life is not about equality. Life is not about morality. Life is not about democracy. Life is about power, man, by any means, bro. By any means, establish your power and maintain your power. Our problem is we are so divided. We are so divided. And like I said, a lot of it has to do with we have to introduce a new generation of leaders, a new, a new fresh batch of leaders who aren't entrenched and established in the system as it is currently established today. A lot of the current leaders that we see today, these guys have been in politics for decades. They are established and invested in the way the system has always ran. So we need a new batch, a clean slate. And as it stands right now, it says that Kenya offered uh, to send police officers to train um, Haitian soldiers. I don't know if they're going to be, you know, frontline combat. I don't know. So I'm not going to jump out the window and, and give my opinion on anything. So I'm not going to jump out the window and give my, my analysis just yet. Like, you got to sit back and, and analyze the terrain and, and see how things play out in three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, uh, 24 months. Then you can come back with an analysis, right? You cannot jump out the window just yet. You know, you got you got to pump your brakes when you when you talk about geopolitics, man, because you you don't know what is being said in these secret meetings behind the scenes. You don't know what is being planned and concocted for next year, five years, 10 years. So you got to sit back and wait, man. You got to sit back and wait. Anyways, man, it's your boy Nefakari. That's the lane back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash app up on the screen and I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass and I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fought it. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applaud it. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart it be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders, falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Get for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making it ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never. Be bought, play all my money. I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so at least. Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gonna murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.